3D Cupid's Bow and Arrow Acrylic Nailer Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you one of a few Valentine's Day themed tutorials that I have for you. So the first kind of Valentine's Day one I did was the avocados that said avocado on them um, and that was a few days ago. So if you missed that one, that will be kind of part of my little 2018 Valentine's Day series or collection. Um, so that's the first one, but this is going to be the second one. I absolutely love this one. It is a Cupid design that I think turned out fantastic. It's got a rose gold background and this is a rose gold that I just got from Born Pretty Store at the end of December or mid-December and I don't know that I'm 100% happy with it. You'll see what I mean as I'm using it. It's just, I don't know, it doesn't seem to get a very smooth finish on it, but you'll see. You'll see that, but I wanted to do the rose gold anyway, even though I knew it wasn't one of my favorite powders, but I was like, you know what, this this just needs rose gold. So anyways, that is the background, and then it's got a, just a very simple white little Cupid silhouette at the tip of the nail, and then a very extreme 3D Cupid's bow at the top. And this is such an easy piece to make, the Cupid's bow. It's just, it's a couple 3D acrylic pieces, and then it's some wire and some thread. It's one of the easiest things that you can make and then it just sticks on so simple. So I hope you guys like this and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So I'm going to begin with an overlay of a pink acrylic. So when I, I know that normally before you would do a chrome powder like I did with the rose gold, you would want to do black, but I didn't want it to have I don't know, I didn't want it to be that dark underneath, so with any color, you don't have to do black. And I decided I would do pink, and I have used this rose gold in the past, I know that it's a super pigmented chrome powder, it's one of those that just really kind of takes over. I know some of them are a little bit more on the sheer side, so it really picks up whatever color is underneath it. This one doesn't, and I wanted it to still have a very pink hue, so anytime it did kind of show what's underneath it, I wanted it to still be pink. And then I'm going to be encasing the nail with just a layer of clear acrylic, not too much, just a little bit. The pink acrylic I have is um, a little puffier, I don't know if that makes sense, a little bit thicker than some of them, so I didn't really need too much clear, but just a little bit just to make sure that it is nice and strong. And now I'm going to be filing the nail into shape with my e-file. I started out with a pretty coarse bit just to remove any bulk that there might have been, especially with that pink color that I was using, I knew that there would be, especially along the sides. That color just seems to ask to cause trouble. And then I'm going to be filing it with a finer bit just to remove any scratches, apply a layer of gel top coat, a uh, no web gel top coat, and then burnish in your chrome powder. This is the pink one that I used. And like I said, I just don't think that the result is quite, quite what I would ask of it. Um, the powder looks really promising. It just doesn't quite turn out as smoothly as I would hope. So I removed any extra powder with a little lint-free wipe, and then I'm going to be applying just some gel sealer over the top of it and curing it. Now I buffed the tip of the nail, which is where I'm going to be painting my little cupid, and then remove the dust from buffing it. The reason you want to buff it before you paint is because if you just try to paint on top of the gel sealer, it's not going to it's not going to go well, and it's not going to last very well either because it, you don't really want to paint on top of a shiny surface. So if you very carefully buff just the shine off the tip. You don't want to buff it all the way through the gel sealer and get rid of your chrome powder. You just want to just take off just a touch of that shine. Then with white paint, I'm going to be painting my little Cupid and I started with the head and I did it so that part of his body, like his legs would be off the nail. I didn't want it to be, I don't know. I wanted to be a little bit bigger than what I had room for on the tip and I knew that I wanted the bow, that 3D piece to be really, really large at the top. So I just decided to do him. So he's partially off the nail, which doesn't bother me at all. But then I'm going to really want to do his body, his legs, his wings, whole nine yards with that white. And when you're doing this, you may have to add a second coat to your white because you want to make sure that it's a very opaque, really opaque, uh, really broad image, really, um, really visual really visual thing and then add the bow that he's holding with the little arrow like I said adding a second coat especially my white seems like it usually looks like it'll be good for a first coat and then after it dries it's like oh it's a little streaky that needs a little bit more here or there so just go through and fill in any areas that need it and then apply another layer of gel sealer and cure it again so now to make the arrow, you're going to want to take, and with red acrylic, I'm going to be making the little arrow on the arrow. So the wires for the shaft of the arrow, and for the point on it, I'm going to be actually making a heart instead. You know, it's, it's I was going to say Halloween. Oh my goodness, it's Valentine's Day. So you do have to add some hearts, though. This is probably my most classic Valentine's Day design from this year. I normally kind of shy away from those, as I will mention in some of my other videos later on. Um... I do have a couple more that aren't quite so so hearts and pink, but 
do go ahead and do that so then you're also going to want to add the fletching on the other side with gold acrylic just a little bit um it doesn't take too much gold acrylic and really you don't want to make this whole thing too big it's very easy to suddenly make these pieces huge and all of a sudden you'll be like oh my goodness that was not going to fit on the nail this is humongous so just kind of bear in mind and when you cut that wire, hold it up to the nail to see how big it is and know that that's kind of what you're basing your whole entire bow and arrow off of and make sure that that's not too big from the beginning. And so then you're going to actually have to make your bow. So with gold acrylic, the same color that you used for the fletching, I'm going to be just adding first a bead on one side and I did one side and you just kind of add it and then you just sort of stretch it and pull it out. It stretches and pulls very easily on the nail form backing since that's a slippery surface and you can just kind of form it into that especially you might need to set your bead down and then let it dry for a second so then with nail glue you're going to want to glue your arrow to the bow which seems a little bit wacky because you never do that you want it to be able to move but glue your arrow to your bow and hold it there for just a second for it to dry and so then after that is dried grab a piece of black thread and just trim it off so that you got plenty of length and then flip your bow over so that you're gluing on the back side of it and just put a dab of glue on one end and glue your wire down. So just hold it for a second. It shouldn't take too long. That nail glue usually dries pretty quick. Trim off any extra thread if you had any. Flip it over and then wrap that up around the back of the wire of the arrow. So your fletching shouldn't completely encompass the wire. It, there should be still like a little notch on there. So you should be able to just to put a little bit of glue on the on the wire and then a little glue on the other side of the arrow and just sort of wrap it and hold it for a moment and it should stick really really well and should create that really nice thread that really nice string on your arrow so then glue your whole bone arrow thing your whole bone arrow to the nail with a little bit of nail glue and it pretty much needs to be right in the center of that wire because that's the center of the bow so it doesn't have a very strong hold on it so just glue that this is a very temporary attachment and then make sure that it's going to really be attached and stick well with some clear acrylic underneath so put on as much clear acrylic as you have time for as you want to mess around with just keep adding it because this piece everything on it is very thin the one good thing is that that the wire and the arrow is not going to break and that the string isn't going to break but the really the main thing you have to worry about is the bow itself breaking so add as much clear acrylic as as you can just to make sure that it is going to be strong and it's not going to bust on you right away this one is a little bit on the delicate side so just kind of keep that in mind as you're making it and just be kind of careful unless you add plenty of that clear acrylic so that is it i hope you guys like this one and i will put links to my other 2018 valentine's day videos in the description box below so check those out please share any recreations with me on facebook or instagram i would love to see them and i will see you in my next video bye